Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, my name is Eric Jensen. I am the general manager of exploration for uh, EMX Realty Corporation. It's a great time to be a shareholder in EMX, and I'm going to tell you why. In the course of doing so, I'm going to make some forward-looking statements. This language will be available in the, the post-conference distribution materials. Okay, uh, EMX is a royalty generator, as Gwen introduced us. And so what that means is I've got teams of entrepreneurial geologists all around the world who are constantly on the lookout for new and high-quality high exploration assets. And so as we identify these opportunities, our team acquires these assets, and then in the mode of a prospect generator, which is how we used to, uh, what we used to call ourselves, we will find partner companies to acquire those assets and advance them. EMX keeps a royalty, which gives us long-term exposure to the expiration upside and successes on those properties. But we also cast our deal terms in, in ways that provide us with revenue streams prior to production. And those can include advanced royalty payments, milestone payments, and other sort of option payments along the way. So it also gives us some near-term revenue, which we then feed back into our royalty generation machine. Another thing we do, which Gwen touched on, is we, uh, at, at, at times, we will make strategic and uh, careful royalty acquisitions. And so sometimes we'll go out in the market and actually buy a royalty. Now, as you probably know, this is a very competitive space. Uh, the companies that, that survive on simply buying royalties oftentimes pay premiums for those in the market. But we have the luxury of being selective. That's not the core focus of our company. But if we see an opportunity that makes sense for an acquisition, we'll move on that. We've done that with great success in a couple of cases over the past many years. A third component to what we do is down in the bottom, and that's strategic investments. Uh, with this talented team of geologists we have roaming around the world, oftentimes we see other companies that have key assets who are making discoveries that for some reason the market hasn't appreciated or we see value the market's not recognizing. And so we will go out and make strategic investments into companies where we see that kind of upside. And we've had some tremendous returns over the lifetime of the company uh, following that, that type of an initiative. So that's a third component. All three of these things lend cash flow that gets routed back into the front end of this process that drives, again, the royalty generation, acquisition, and strategic investments. Okay, in doing so, what this basically does is this creates a commercial flywheel of, of activity. So through time, uh, routing our investments back into the front end of that process, we iteratively build a, a, an increasing, increasingly large portfolio. So when I joined this company in about 2010, we had about 30-some projects in our portfolio. And since that time, we're now approaching 100 projects. And this process accelerates through time. So the bigger we get, the more cash flow we have, the more resources we have, the more products we bring in, and this will grow effectively as a large, it'll crescendo and start growing exp exponentially with time, which is what's happening right now. And so we're seeing some tremendous additions on the acquisition and partnership size, uh, 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 side of things right now. And so with almost 100 projects around the world, I can say that this portfolio now has an inc uh, a much greater amount of value than it did when I first joined the company. And so we're, we're, we've been really on an impressive growth rate at EMX, especially in the last two years. This is probably the most important slide I'm going to show today. This shows the, uh, a manifest of our partner companies around the world. And so, as you can see, we've attracted quite a bit of, of talent on the, uh, the resource and mining side of things. We have partnerships with a number of the world's biggest mining companies, as well as a, a number of mid-tier and smaller companies as well. Uh, there's a group of companies in Turkey that you may not recognize, but these are actually big Turkish conglomerate uh, companies that are very adept at building mines. And so we have several partners in Turkey that are advancing some of our products, uh, projects to the, uh, the production stage right now. So we're very proud of those partnerships. I also should point out that a number of these companies we've done repeat business with in the past. And several of these companies have multiple projects uh, that they're advancing in, in our, from our portfolio. A good example of that is Rio Tinto, who currently has quite a number of our projects. We've done repeat business with Antofagast and other companies through time as well. So this is uh, probably the thing I'm most proud of, is the caliber of partners that we're bringing into our projects, which speaks to the quality of the projects in general as well, and the capabilities of our generative team. In terms of shareholders, uh, Paul Stevens, has been an ardent a supporter of our company through time. He owns about 17% of our company, and that's been growing with time. Sprott's been with us for a number of years as well. They've been a strong supporter of EMX through the years. An important thing to point out here, too, is that uh, between 8 and 9% of our company 
is owned by the directors and management. And so uh, we have a vested interest in the success of the company. And when our management group makes commercial decisions, we make them as shareholders because we are shareholders. Now, I'm not going to go into the detail on this slide, but this summarizes some of the new, uh, the new advancements we've been making over the past few months. And you can, you'll get this in the... In the the presentation distribution materials. But in North America, as Gwen said, our Leeville royalty continues to generate a lot of funding for our company, a lot of cash flow uh, from the Newmont's operation. But some of Newmont's best exploration success globally has been in the corridor of mineralization on this property. And they made some pretty phenomenal announcements in the last uh, two years about some of the exploration successes on our Leeville prop our royalty property. We're really excited. The growth potential in this property is outstanding. And likewise, we've just signed up a couple of the world's big mining companies, such as Rio Tinto, Antofagasta, Anglo-American, are all exploring uh, projects in the EMX portfolio in North America right now. I'm really fired up about Scandinavia. We've been on a tear in Scandinavia. Uh, during the downturn, a lot of companies simply exhausted their treasuries in Scandinavia and had to let go of a lot of high-quality projects. And we were poised. We've been up there for a while, and our team in Scandinavia had a short list which then became a long list of exploration opportunities we are watching carefully. As companies ran out of uh, resources to keep and maintain these projects and they came available, we've been acquiring quite a number of high quality assets in Scandinavia. A lot of deal flow. Uh, South 32, for example, just joined us in a partnership in Scandinavia. We have, we've had a number of other announcements with other companies and we'll have more news coming out of that. But we're very active there. A lot of high quality projects, a lot of drilling up there and a lot of new, uh, new stories that are emerging from that portal. Portfolio. Russia, I can, <laughs> probably can't say enough about this, but uh, I'll be brief. Uh, yeah, we've been, uh, there's been a lot of banter about our Malmish project, which as Gwen said, this is one of the world's great giant uh, ongoing copper gold discoveries. It's in uh, partnership with Freeport. We've made a strategic investment here. Uh, we haven't, our, our, our investment's actually quite modest considering the amount of metal that's been discovered as, part, as this project has evolved. And recently we've announced that Scotia Bank has been engaged to facilitate a transaction on this asset for us. And so we're really excited about having them involved. They're, they're very capable, we're fully confident that they'll be able to execute their intent for Malmish. And so that'll be a big, uh, yeah, a, a, a important day for EMX when we're able to monetize that asset. Yeah, a lot of, uh, we put some money into that. We've had great exploration success, and now it's time to reap the benefit of that. Over in Turkey, this is, you know, this is one of our older portfolios, and people may have forgotten that we have assets in Turkey, but our partners are drilling tens of thousands of meters on these projects uh, this year and, and last year as well. And so we've seen a lot of advancement on these. Akarcha, Sisorta, and Bali are all steaming forward. Akarcha and Sisorta are being fast-tracked to development. I'll talk a bit more about that in another slide. Over in Serbia, we have a royalty on the Chakuro Peki discovery, which is again one of the world's giant uh, uh, recent uh, copper and gold discoveries, one of the top five in the world in the past 10 years, I would argue. We have a royalty on that. Nevson just announced a couple weeks ago that that is being advanced to to the construction phase, that will start in June. So next month, it will start construction. So we'll see some near-term cash flow from that royalty as well. OK, so cash flow, we're doing really well this year. We have a lot of money coming in from Leeville and from uh, our other royalty sources and a number of our pre-production agreements. Uh, we've also been taking equity position in some of our junior companies that we do deals with. And so we're building up a, a share capital portfolio with a number of our junior partners as well. New agreements, Antofagasta, Rio Tinto, Salt 32, the names speak for themselves. I just want to say a quick thing about our partner, Boreal Metals Corporation, which is advancing a portfolio of ours in Scandinavia. Boreal had some outstanding drill results this, uh, this spring that I'm not sure the market appreciated. And uh, we're continuing to advance those projects. Boreal's gonna be drilling quite a bit this year and I'm expecting we're gonna see some other uh, fantastic results coming out of those, pro uh, those, uh, uh, those properties. But yeah, go to our website and see some of these numbers these guys produce. I think the market will recognize that in the near future. Akarcha, this is our epithermal project being advanced by a private Turkish company called Shifti. And uh, outstanding drill results, some of the best drill results in the history of the property uh, we've announced, and those are on our website as well. And of course, Malmish. We talked about Scotiabank, their engagement to monetize this asset. This is a giant, giant deposit that we expect to see some nice, uh, a nice windfall from at some point. So value drivers, the organic growth, uh, organic royalty generation mechanism is firing in all cylinders. We've been very aggressive, lots of partnerships, lots of deal flow, lots of new acquisitions. Of course, the Leeville property continues to fund our activities. Malmish is, on, is uh, being advanced by Scotiabank to the sale, uh, the point of sale. 
and Shakuro Peke, excited about that royalty. But when you iterate over the, uh, the, the sheer size of this portfolio, there's a lot of value that's being recognized now. So we've planted a lot of seeds. Those seeds are germinating. And I always hear people saying, when are we going to start seeing the long-term value in this massive portfolio that you guys have been talking about? Well, if you look up at the tree right now, the tree is full of fruit. So if you want to get in on the harvest, this is a good time. It's a great time to be a shareholder at EMX. Thank you. <laughs>